It's an honor to share communion with you again today. I'm working again from my book, Do This in Remembrance of Me, a one-year communion devotional. This is week 28 for this purpose. As we partake of communion today, let us consider the purpose of Jesus. He made many bold statements about his purpose. And today I want to zero in on one declaration of his purpose contained in a message which was written after his resurrection. God inspired the beloved disciple of Jesus to include this spiritual bombshell in one of his epistles to the church. 1 John 3, 8. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, came with a mission of destruction. He came to loosen, dissolve, and demolish the works of the devil. He left the works of the enemy in ashes and debris. The elements of communion represent the strategy he used to put his foot on the head of the enemy to fulfill God's promise in Genesis 3.15. Jesus crushed the head of the serpent. He annihilated the works of the devil through the sacrificial offering of his blood and his body. The devil orchestrated the crucifixion to sabotage his prophecy. Instead, <laughs> he hastened his own demise. 1 Corinthians 2, 7 through 8. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Jesus raised the works of the devil with the wrecking ball of the cross and the explosives of the shedding of his blood. And what are the works of the devil? He conducted his dirty work from his den of iniquity and darkness. And that den was held up by two pillars. Jesus took down those two pillars and the entire building collapsed into rubbish. What are the two pillars? Number one, shame. The devil is an appropriate and descriptive name for this malignant spirit. Devil means traducer, and a traducer is one who exposes another to shame or blame by means of falsehood and misrepresentation, resulting in distress to the victim. Jesus destroyed this pillar with the shedding of his blood. As a result of the power of the blood, we are free from guilt and shame. Praise the Lord. The arrest warrant that was against us was nailed to the cross. However, the devil is a clever and convincing attorney who succeeds only when we believe his accusations against us. We believe them even though they contradict the word of God. The devil is a liar and the father of all lies. This pillar lies in shambles under the banner of truth. Jesus freed us from guilt and shame. His blood washed away our sins and we are innocent in the sight of God. Here's proof, Romans 3.25. For God sent Christ Jesus to take the punishment for our sins and to end all God's anger against us. He used Christ's blood and our faith as the means of saving us from his wrath. In this way, he was being entirely fair even though he did not punish those who sinned in former times. For he was looking forward to the time when Christ would come and take away those sins. That's from the Living Bible. What is the second pillar that Jesus destroyed? Leaving a pile of rubble that was once the devil's base of operation. Pillar number two, sickness and disease. A study of the Gospels and the book of Acts reveals the devil's treacherous work of sickness and disease. On many occasions, he is credited with the debit of ill health. Jesus left this pillar in shambles with his preaching, teaching, and healing. Many times, the devil and his demons are mentioned in the same breath with sickness and disease. I'll give you a few examples. In Matthew 17, 14 through 18, a boy was having epileptic seizures. Jesus rebuked the demon, it left the boy, and he was healed. In Luke 11, 14, Jesus cast a demon out of a man who couldn't speak. When the devil was gone, the man could speak. In Matthew 12, 22, Jesus healed a demon-possessed man who was blind and couldn't speak. When Jesus fulfilled his purpose for this man, he could see and speak. A scripture in the book of Acts is Peter's eulogy about his Lord and King who died and rose from the dead. His audience is comprised of Gentiles, those who are considered outsiders to God's covenant and his promises. Peter discovered that God is no respecter of persons. The purpose of Jesus was fulfilled for the whole world. Jews and Gentiles alike stand victorious on the ashes of the pillar of sickness and disease. 
Acts 10, 34 through 38. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word, you know, which was proclaimed throughout Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing, I said healing, all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Those who are oppressed by the devil are under the dominion of the devil. God empowered Jesus to demolish the devil's pillar of sickness and disease. The Message Bible says that he healed everyone who was beaten down by the devil. As you partake of communion today, if you have been beaten down by sickness and disease, focus your meditation on Acts 10.38. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when people came to Jesus in faith, he ripped up the devil's calling card of evil. He cured those who were harassed by the foul vendor of sickness and disease. If your vital relationship with Christ is deviating into a shame-based religion, you're under the influence of the traducer. Remind yourself that Jesus shed his blood to spring you from the death row of sin and guilt. Use the elements today to shine a light on and expose the devil's dark agenda. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. I will close this devotion with a foundation scripture for this week from a different translation. If these words register in your heart, the devil's heyday in your life will be history. 1 John 3, 8, the Phillips translation. Now the Son of God came to earth with the express purpose of liquidating the devil's activities. So that means that Jesus eradicated, exterminated, obliterated, stamped out, and suspended indefinitely the activities of the devil. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today that we can partake of communion with knowledge of the purpose of Jesus Christ, that you came to destroy the works of the wicked one. So God, we stand victorious on the ashes of shame and sickness and disease. They're like rubbish under our feet because we walk in the light of the truth of your word. By your stripes, we were healed. We thank you for this victory and for this great salvation. Let's partake together.